Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to Seed to Play channel. And uh, today, we're gonna do a little vlog situation. What did I get on myself? I don't know why you guys talk to me. Um, anyways, um, I am on pest trap business. Because here's the thing. I got stung by a wasp last weekend. And that shit hurts. Holy good gosh, that that was painful. And you want to know what was even more painful? Is I took the extended nozzle for my hose that I was holding in my hand and I whacked my own ankle bone where I got stung so hard that it gave me a bone bruise that now over a week later is still there. So, um, I've tried everything to get rid of these damn wasps. I have uh, gotten rid of the what they were after, which was water. I had some standing water. Um, that was a tray for all of my baby rooted seedlings. I got rid of that. Um, they've built two nests under our patio that I have sprayed aggressively with wasp spray. And I am now at the point where I am going to be putting together a trap. So how this works is I will hang this from something. I'm not sure what yet. We'll hang it and I will fill it up to this line with water, some dish soap, and then it said either beer or fruit juice or meat scraps. And before I waste any meat, I think I might grab like a, a crappy beer that I can't even drink. I don't drink beer. America. I don't know why we have one Bud Light in our fridge, but we do. Um, so that's that. I honestly might just put these out on the patio and see how they work instead of hanging them somewhere. But you use the dish soap to make the liquid that you're gonna put in here. Basically what happens is the wasp is gonna fly in, it's gonna smell the beer, it's gonna fly in, and it's going to like land on the water to drink and then it's gonna get stuck because of the dish soap. So the only thing I don't love about this solution, which I tried to do a lot of stuff before I've resorted to this, um, is that I could be getting honeybees in this. However, I have not seen any honeybees in our backyard. I don't have any pollinator plants blooming yet. So that tells me that um, the, the bees are either being driven away by the wasps or they just aren't out yet. So I'm not super concerned about hurting bees, which I feel like was the main reason that I was avoiding this, but I think at this point it's unavoidable. So we're gonna do a couple little pumps of dish soap in each of these. I also do this for fruit flies, by the way. Actually, we got a big old infestation of fruit flies. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. I use a like some kind of bottle with a narrower top on it and I actually use apple cider vinegar and they smell ap apple cider the apple cider vinegar blah, 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 blah. and uh, yeah they smell the apple cider vinegar and they land on the water and it's kind of the same concept so we did that much water I never open beer anymore. It's so weird. Ugh, it doesn't. Oh, it smells like college. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It's so bad. We're gonna see if this works, y'all. I'm not letting these dang pests chew me out of my garden. The other pest I have a problem with are the squirrels, but they don't challenge me the way that these damn wasps do. And they're actually just paper wasps, which typically they're not aggressive. However, since they have a resource and they're also trying to build their nest, they've gotten a little aggressive. Um, also, I'm a little fucking scared of them now because one got me. Okay, y'all, the traps are placed. <laughs> I didn't take you outside with me because I was trying to be like all ears, all eyes, all ears on my surroundings because how I got nailed the first time was I was like trudging along. I was watering the garden and I wasn't watching where my feet were going and I must have almost stepped on one um, and it, it nailed me. So we're gonna see if these traps work. I mean, I haven't seen as many of them today because we got a pretty decent rain last night and we're gonna get more rain, so I hope that doesn't mess with the traps, but oh, I'll keep you updated. All right, y'all. Let's see if my wasp traps are doing anything. Unfortunately, because of the wasp situation, 
I have not really been wanting to be outside in my garden, which is like so sad. It doesn't look like we've caught any wasps and like I'm really scared of flying things. Like I can't even, I'm like having a hard time enjoying my garden. It's really sad. Um, but it looks like my wasp traps aren't working. So if anybody knows a thing or two about the waspy guys, let me know. So since the theme of the week has been uh, pests, um, I wanted to go over kind of like the biggest garden pest that you're gonna find at least in Texas, if not like generally in the South, and talk about like ways to get rid of them, if you can live with them, if they're beneficial, blah, blah, blah. So let's talk about bugs because I'm gonna tell you guys something. I partly grew up in Arizona and the bugs are big and scary, like scorpions. And I used to actually hate being outside, which is ironic now because I love gardening so much, but I used to truly hate being outside. Um, and so when I started gardening, I started like enjoying being outside again. Um, but this whole like wasp thing has really kind of thrown me for a loop. Like I. Like I legitimately don't want to be outside in my own backyard where it's like glorious and I've planted all of these beautiful things. So let's talk about some southern garden pests and some of these are going to apply to everywhere but some of them I know are like fairly siloed to the south. So first and foremost is aphids. We all know aphids. They're like these little juice sucking creatures um, that ladybugs eat. So aphids are bad news bears. Um, I haven't seen too many aphids. I remember the first year I was gardening, I had an aphid problem, but I don't have too many aphid issues anymore. Generally though, if you do like a neem oil or if you do, um, if you mix, there's like a soap and water mixture that you can mix together and um, spray on your plants. You can also just blast them off with the hose. Um, so aphids are not a super hard one. <laughs> so the next biggest one, and I actually had problems with this last year, it killed a few of my tomato plants, are white flies. And white flies are super hard to see. They're super duper tiny. Um, and honestly, you can't really see them until it's too late. And a lot of the times white flies will happen because of a nitrogen deficiency. Um, so if you do see them, you can use neem oil or whatever. But the issue with them is they carry different diseases uh, like curly leaf virus. So that's what happened to a bunch of my tomatoes at the community garden plot last year was curly leaf virus took them all out. Um, so like I said, you can use neem oil, but honestly, if you just make sure your soil is nicely amended, you shouldn't have an issue with white flies. So two that we all probably know and hate are squash vine borers uh, and squash bugs. So squash vine borers, they are, um, basically there's this, this moth that kind of looks a little waspy. Um, and this moth will lay its eggs on squash stems and squash leaves and those eggs will hatch within like, I think it's 10 to 14 days and then they burrow themselves into the stem of the plant and they eat it from the inside out. So I think they call it frass or something like that but basically when the cabbage or when the squash plant has been eaten um, on the way out as the as it makes its way into the soil and then it pupates and then it does all that stuff. So it basically will like live in the soil and they'll continue to come back. I'm um, excuse me dogs. That's a that's a child. That is a that is just a nice family walking. So squash vine borers are really hard to catch. They're really hard to prevent and apart from I literally sat outside last year with some wasp spray to murder those little suckers um there's really not much you can do so you can scrape off the eggs i've seen some people like bury the main squash stem in soil but that doesn't really work i've seen some people wrap them in plastic wrap that doesn't really work so there's not a ton that can be done about squash vine borers i'm growing a different type of squash this year called mexican tattoo squash so it's supposed to be pretty resistant to squash vine borers so we will see how that happens. The other way that you can do that is just by straight up covering them. So if you wanna build a whole cover around that has like fine mesh um, to go over your squash, you can avoid um, them that way as well. I've also heard that um, anything else that's yellow, so sometimes they're attracted to like the yellow blossoms. So if you like paint a yellow rock, <laughs> Um, in your garden, that can help. I This is not a tested theory. This kind of feels like an old wives tale, but hey, you know what? Sometimes that stuff works. 
Um, so squash vine borers are a big problem. Squash bugs are also a big problem. They're not quite as hard to deal with. You could probably get them with some diatomaceous earth. You could also just probably pick them off, squish them. Um, squash bugs are more of a problem when they really kind of overtake things. Um, also you can find uh, like clusters of eggs on the back of leaves and squash them that way. Squash bugs are mostly a problem when they're laying eggs and then their little like little baby squash bugs like eat everything. All right y'all, the last one I wanna talk about that I think is more isolated to the south is leaf-footed bugs. I've talked multiple times about how much I hate these things. I hate with a capital H these things, okay? They are aggressively territorial. They can't hurt you. Like they're not gonna bite you. They're just big and they're ugly and they're gross and I literally can't kill them. Um, so you can't just squash them. They really don't like to be sprayed with water. I've literally had one fly right at my face and it was just so uncalled for. Um, I have gotten their nymphs with diatomaceous earth and that does the trick. So if you just get diatomaceous earth, the way diatomaceous earth works is it's basically like these ground up fossil shells and some people have strong opinions about it. I think it works, but diatomaceous earth will, um, basically get underneath the exoskeleton and it almost makes them like itchy and then they shed their exoskeleton and then they get burned up by the sun. So a little aggressive, a little violent. Now I'm talking about it out loud, but, um, these leaf footed bugs, they are looking for host plants to lay their eggs and then they like guard their eggs. And then, and I'm not like an entomologist. Is that what it is? An entomologist for bugs? I don't know. I'll correct it if I'm wrong. But uh, I have watched these things cycle through my garden over the years and they love sunflowers. Never plant sunflowers in your vegetable garden or you will get these little effers. And the, they do play somewhat of a detriment to the garden, especially with tomatoes. I had them bad one year and they will like take their little sucking mouth parts and they pierce your tomatoes and they suck the juice out. Oh, it's so rude. Um, so yeah, leaf footed bugs, like they're not super detrimental. Like they're not the worst thing in the world. They're just big and scary and I hate them. And the wasps. And I'll, you know what, squash bugs run away from me. And like squash vine borers, whatever. But man, some of these bugs, I just, I can't. I, I just can't deal. I don't even know if any of those that I listed are beneficial. I don't think they are. So a bit of a chaotic vlog. Apparently bugs are the topic of the week. I really, if you have any tips about like overcoming my fear, at this point it's a legitimate fear. I literally cringed so many times when I was at my community garden today watering uh, because I was just like, I would see something in my peripheral vision and I'd be like, Hoo! not today, Satan. And by Satan, I mean wasps. So uh, if you have any advice of just like getting back on that horse, I would love to take it. I know it sounds real dumb and it sounds just real stupid, but man, that, hurt so bad and now I'm like just so paranoid and I need these dang wasps gone. I really do, I can't enjoy my backyard. I used to work out there every day for like a couple hours, not doing that because the wasps, because I'm scared. So yeah, good luck with your pests. Those are the top ones that I can think of for Tejas and a lot of the South. I love gardening but this is the time of year where I hate weeds and I hate bugs and I'm not motivated to deal with either of them even though now's the time you have to deal with both of them because I'm not getting anything out of the garden yet. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening and we'll see you next time.